These are the top 10 worst punishments a person could receive in the Roman Empire. Number 10. Spolia Opima Roman military culture prized few values more highly than personal bravery when a general or soldier was opposed to an enemy king. Where Roman ritual demanded that the Roman kill the opposing king in hand-to-hand -hand combat in order to earn the most prized form of military honor known as Spolia Opima. While it was not a matter of legal obligation, not to do so was a serious blow to prestige and often led the soldier to take their own life. Number 9. Infamia Infamia was a sort of social death and not a physical punishment, where a person who had been tainted with infamia was no longer capable of holding any public office, entering into any sort of contract, or testifying in courts. But the most surprising fact about this type of punishment is that it was not only applied to criminals, but also to people exercising certain professions, such as actors or prostitutes. Even though actors' jobs were to entertain people, they were placed in the same social category as criminals because Roman society perceived certain occupations as morally degrading. Huh, if only it was like that today. And this punishment was so bad because for the Romans everything was a matter of personal reputation where loss of honor might be life changing and even worse than death. Number 8. The Law of Twelve Tables This law allowed the Roman government to spawn camp as long as it was a child born with deformities, since homies born with extra chromies were seen as social failures, thus giving any father the right to expose, abandon, or even unalive the child in case it was born with serious deformity or physical defects. This practice was a sign of an obsession with physical perfection that existed in Roman society because deformity was conventionally regarded as a bad omen or divine displeasure. Let's just say if this law was still in use today, I would be an only child, and there would be a lot less single mothers out there. Sir, are you sure? This baby looks completely normal. Nah, nah, I don't think it does. I'm a... I'm gonna go ahead and throw it away. Number 7. Tarpeian Rock Treason Particularly the selling out of the Roman state to enemy forces would often see executions carried out by hurling the condemned from what is known as the Tarpeian Rock, which is just a steep cliff on the southern summit of the Capitoline Hill. This mode of execution was both a punishment and a spectacle, where it would be a long fatal fall for the criminal and a long enjoyable form of entertainment for the crowd. But it was not the fall that was the most important part of this punishment, the public impression of the punishment was, making it very clear what would happen to any person who dared betray Rome. After the penalty of the Tarpeian Rock was carried out, the body of the traitor was left at the bottom of the cliff for all to see. You know, since the Romans felt public execution served as deterrence to any potential acts of treason by the populace, and I have to say, that would definitely work on me. Number 6. Fustuarium One who was found guilty of desertion or sleeping while on guard duty was punished by being beaten to death with clubs by his fellow comrades. Just imagine you're a Roman soldier for a second, and one day you didn't get enough sleep the night before, so you take a little nap, and the next thing you know your best friend is beating the brakes off of you with a club. In this form of punishment, disciplinary action was not the only use of fustuarium, but it was also used to instill fear and obedience among the other soldiers, since they had to enforce the death sentence themselves, making them always aware that their actions or lack of action could have consequences for the whole unit. Number 5. Decimation one of the most dreaded sentences one could receive in the Roman military was decimation, which was reserved for units guilty of cowardice, desertion, or mutiny. It's like the last law, but on major steroids. Under decimation, the offending unit would be divided into groups of ten and one soldier in each group chosen by lots would be beaten to death by the other nine. Where the randomness of the selections invoked a different level of terror within the soldiers because any of them could be selected. It was a psychological tool as much as a physical punishment because it was enforced to break the morale of the group to instill a collective discipline, deterring any ideas of disobeying the Roman Empire ever again. Number 4. Manus Marriage the authority of a husband in early Roman society was virtually absolute over a wife, just the way I like it, particularly in the case of a manus marriage, where a woman was legally at the mercy of her husband. For example, if a wife was found guilty of adultery, the husband retained the right to punish her, often by embarrassing her publicly. And in extreme cases, he could kill her or give her to her father for execution, and that has to be one of the most wild things I've ever researched. It is literally every father's worst nightmare to find out that their daughter is a thought, let alone in this manner. 
Like, imagine one day you get a visit from your daughter and son-in-law, and he says that your daughter cheated on him, and while you're listening to them argue and bicker, your head is just spiraling out of control with horrendous thoughts about your daughter's true nature. Anyway, it was also not uncommon for the wife to be publicly locked in a small room or paraded before the community. If this law was still in effect today, Miami would literally have a parade of about 10 women like every single day. Number 3. Buried Alive a lot of people's worst fear is being buried alive, and the Romans being sadistically creative used it as one of their legal punishments. One of the most respected roles that women played in ancient Rome was that of Vestal Virgin, a priestess of the goddess Vesta. The job of these women was to guard the holy fire of Rome, for which they had to take vows of celibacy for as many as 30 years. In the event that one of the Vestals did breach their vow of celibacy, the punishment would be very, let's just say, suffocating. The guilty woman would be brought to a small underground chamber with some food and water and left to die there slowly by, you guessed it, suffocation or starvation. Was it really good enough to die for Octavia? It was. Stalin Phalas. Oh. <laughs> well, you know what? The Greeks think he's stupid, and if I could throw you down here twice, I would. Number 2. Pina Cole. Patricide, the killing of one's father, was considered one of the worst crimes imaginable in Roman society since it demonstrated a gross violation of family and social values. Punishment for patricide was very strange, but you gotta give it to them, the Romans were creative as hell. Now, most of you probably know about this one, but the guilty party was sewn into a leather sack with a collection of animals, like a dog, a rooster, a viper, and a monkey, and then thrown into a river. It's creative because these are like the worst animals to be stuck in a bag floating on a river with. The dog would be freaking out and biting you, the rooster would be freaking out and pecking you, the monkey would literally be going apeshit and punch you, and the viper would be doing what they do best, which is inject you with venom. The only way I see this getting worse is by replacing the rooster with a cat. Number 1. Crucifixion this punishment was so bad that they had to put God's Son and my personal Savior Jesus Christ on there, where it is one of the most infamous methods of execution to have ever been carried out in human history. It is also where we get the word excruciating from, I am not kidding, the word literally means as painful as a crucifixion or out of the cross. It was often carried out against slaves who outraged their masters or even joined uprisings. The point of this punishment was to inflict as much pain humanly possible on the criminal often leaving the poor guy up there until he finally gave in to death. And not only that, it was highly humiliating since they would perform it in an extremely public area, where it would act as a reminder of the terrible consequences awaiting anyone who would question the Roman social order. Researching this list, I am very thankful that I was not born in ancient Rome, and I will never think about the Roman Empire ever again. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, Poppy, and I'll see you in another episode.